Hello, hello. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining me today. I'm looking forward to sharing with you some tips on what you can do to create a happier time as you spend time with your family during this holiday. But before I do that, if you are joining me live, if you could take a moment to just say hello in the chat box or in the comments, uh, that way I know you're here and that you can hear me, that would be great. And if you're catching this on the replay, if you could please just type in hashtag replay in the comments and then I'll know that you've had an opportunity to watch this. So before we get started, oh, and also I am going to uh, refer to some notes. Uh, I have some notes just to make sure I can stay on track. So if you see me looking away from you, I'm uh, checking my notes to make sure that I don't miss anything important. So Benita, hello, hello. Nice to see you there. Thank you for joining. So before I go ahead and share with you the tips that I've prepared for you, I wanted to just take a minute or so to talk a little bit about what happens when families get together and why there seems to be so much stress and anxiety around it. Oftentimes, uh, when we have large group family gatherings, uh, many times there's people coming from out of town, uh, maybe family members that you don't see very often. And what happens when we come together is all of our inner childs appear. Our wounds from the past get activated, um, issues that haven't been resolved between different family members get activated. And so many times people are on pins and needles or they're watching what they're saying or they just kind of start with conflict and drama. So it's not unusual for this to happen. And if that's happened to you before, <laughs> share in the comments that you can relate, that would be great. So what can you do? How can you best prepare so that you can have a happier time? Well, my first tip for you is before you actually get together with your family, find a quiet place in your home to ground yourself and to center yourself. And it doesn't have to take long, it's just a few minutes. Just sit someplace quiet where you won't be disturbed, close your eyes and take a few deep grounding breaths and just allow any of the stress or anxiety or worry that you have about getting together with your family to just kind of dissolve and just go into the ground through your feet or through a grounding cord if you're familiar with creating a grounding cord. Just feel it dissolving and leaving you and, and do your best to go into a heart-centered space. And when you feel yourself in that space, then my second tip is to visualize and envision what experience do you want to have with your family. Even if your inner critic mind is trying to tell you it's not going to happen, it's never been like that, it's always a problem, there's always conflict, do your best to just quiet the inner critic and really connect deeply with what it is that you really desire. What do you want to experience with your family? And then, when you are together, when you do get together, do your best to observe what's going on with your family members and see them as innocent children. When you see them starting to maybe interact in ways that are not loving or where they start to become critical, see if you can see the inner child in them, the wounds that they have not yet healed that are being activated by being together as a family. And then when you do that, Make a conscious choice to just see them as that innocent child instead of going into the judgment. You don't have to engage as you're observing other family members interacting. You can simply watch and observe what's going on and send them love from your heart because energy is very powerful. So if you see things starting to happen, then just, again, quietly within yourself, send out a vibration and an energy of love and peace to each of them and to yourself to be able to stay in that space. Do your best if there's something happening to respond instead of react. And that's not always easy if you also get triggered. So when you see somebody triggered and they're getting upset, give them what you want. See if you can validate what they're feeling. Give them validation. Let them know that they're heard. Um, give them compassion. And the only way you can do that is if you observe, if you're not getting activated yourself and not taking anything personally. Otherwise, it becomes very, very difficult. But if you do find yourself getting triggered, this is tip number four, is to just pause. If you notice yourself starting to feel agitated or angry, then just take a moment to pause instead of just blurting something out. Pause and see if you can connect with what's really going on inside of you. What inner wound is being activated? Are you feeling invalidated? Are you feeling misunderstood or disrespected? 
what is actually going on inside of you and just notice it. You don't have to do anything about it, right? You can just notice it and, and recognize that this is your feelings. Try to take responsibility for it and not blame others. Now, number five is if you catch yourself getting, well, you've already been triggered and you've already reacted, but you notice that you're starting to react to a family member, you can stop in the middle of it. And you can say, wow, I'm really sorry. I don't really mean to be angry. I just feel upset and, and do your best to express yourself authentically from your heart. Let them know what's going on for you. You can say, you know, I'm just feeling invalidated and I'm just trying to be understood and it's not my intention to hurt you. Using the words I'm sorry are really, really powerful and letting people know what your intentions really are because it also helps them to feel like they can express their truth with you as well. So I just noticed, oh, hi, hi there, Miraj, uh, Mirjana, thank you for joining us. I appreciate that. If, if you have any questions of what I said so far, I'm not sure if I actually um, clearly mentioned what each of the steps were. So the first one is where you're going to ground yourself before you actually get together with your family. Take some time to get centered and to ground yourself, release the stress and the anxiety that you might be feeling. The second step is once you are in that peaceful state, to be able to connect with your heart and to really visualize what it is that you want to experience with your family. Just put it out there, visualize it, feel it, feel how wonderful it can feel. Even if a part of you doesn't believe it, just know that by doing this act of visualizing and just owning it, you can create a, a better experience for yourself when you actually do get together with your family. The third tip is when you get together, observe what's going on with their family members. See them as innocent children that are in pain if the conflict and the drama starts. Just know that everybody is doing the best that they can with the tools that they have. And if they're reacting to things, it's because they have unresolved wounds within them. So in that case, you can give them the validation and the compassion and the understanding that you want. Because if we can give to other people what we want for ourselves, then it helps them to give it back. That's what the giving is receiving is all about. Yes, we want it. We want our families to love us unconditionally. We want them to validate how we feel. We want them to appreciate us and to respect us. But sometimes they're just not capable of doing that because they're stuck in their own wounds. So if we can help them, their inner child, to feel supported and loved, then they're more able and more willing to be able to listen to what you have to say. So that was number three. Number four, again, is if you're feeling yourself getting triggered before you actually react, then just pause and notice what is going on with you. And you can take some time later to do some inner healing work around whatever that is, whatever wounds are being activated. Because the more you heal the wounds of the past, the easier it's going to be for you to be in the company of not just your family members, but anybody without getting triggered by the way they might speak to you or the way they may act towards you. And number five is if you do catch yourself that you've already reacted and already fallen into what I call the trigger trap, then that's okay. Don't beat yourself up. We're human. We're not going to be perfect. So as soon as you notice, you can just stop right in the middle of it and apologize. Now, apologizing does not mean you're taking responsibility for everything that's going on. You can apologize for your own reaction. You can say, I'm really sorry that I blurted that out. or I'm really sorry I said that. It's not my intention to hurt you. I just feel whatever it is. And take it one step at a time. But you'll find that the more you lead with your heart, the better the results are going to be because your family will feel that on an energetic level. When we react, we're not in our heart space. We're in the inner child, the wounded place, we're in our ego state. And that just activates the ego of the people around us or the inner child of the people around us. And things just don't turn out very well. So I hope you found those tips helpful. I'd love for you to comment below uh, which of the tips you would find most difficult to maybe follow or which one maybe spoke to you the most. If you have any questions, um, let me just check the boxes here. I don't see any questions, but if you do have any questions, if you're watching the replay, please write them down, comment, and I will come back and answer them for you. I really wish for you to have a really, really wonderful holiday time with your family. Make it the best. Just do your best to be your best self and shine your light. Love you lots. And until next time, I send you love and blessings. Bye for now.